testimony, but I'll give it right. a try. You know, uh, coming to this church is an easy church to go to. It is a good place, you know. I went to a good church when I was a young child, and uh, my parents never went, but they would take me and leave me, you know. And I learned a lot about the Bible, memorized a lot of scriptures and stuff, because it was just the thing you did in a Baptist church. But um, for a long time, I didn't go to church. From the time I was in the going to the seventh grade until I was 27 years old, I didn't go to church unless there was a funeral or a wedding or somewhere. I just had that they made me go. And I didn't care anything about it, and I was uh, pretty bad to drink. I was a lost man, that's what I was. And the Lord changed all that. Uh, some people came by my house and knocked on the door and invited my wife to church doing the census. Mm. And so she went, and the next Sunday I went, and I started going to church again, 27 years old. That was 1977. Amen. And, you know, I really thought because of my past that I was a born-again Christian. But the Lord convicted me. Some, some real old-fashioned preachers were there, and I heard about Jesus. And I was under conviction for a while. And I sweated. I tried to be saved. I tried to make myself saved. I tried to do all the things you could do to make everybody know you were saved. But until one night in 1979, just got on my knees in my bedroom after somebody had been there that day witnessing to me. And I asked Jesus to save me. And I struggled with it. And he asked me, did, are you sure? Did you ask him to save me? And he left the room. But eventually, I just trusted him. And things changed in my life. I got rid of all the stuff I had before, the old things that kept me tied up, you know, bonded up to all the whiskey bottles and the beer out. And got rid of all that. I never did do any dopes. I didn't have any problem with drugs itself other than those. And they're, they're terrible. But God changed my life. And ever since then, the Lord's worked on me. He's never quit working on me. I am sometimes a very bad backslidden Christian. But God just always stays with me. He kept me, as Julie had said, he kept her from some troubles, kept her out of things. He's always done that. Even when I wasn't a Christian, he had something in mind for me. The Lord's allowed me to do a few things for him, and I just praise his name for saving me. Amen. Pray for I will. Father, we are so grateful for your kindness and your mercy. Lord, we thank you that you've given us this chance to study your word. And God, I pray that you'd help us to retain the things that we need to know to help other people. God, I pray for those that have been mentioned tonight. I, I do know the Warner family closely, Lord. I pray that you'd help Miss Warner and the family, the children and the grandchildren. And when they miss him today, Lord, that they'll be able to look to you. God, I pray it be a time to change their lives some and help them. Father, I pray for Miss Copeland and others that were mentioned. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit power would be with the family and help them deal with this situation. And God, if it be your will, we just pray that you'd heal her. We have confidence that you can do that yes. through the Creator God, and we'll trust you with all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I thank you, Brother Bustle. I, I just thought of something. You mentioned uh, uh, children. Never underestimate what children can do. Uh, we are going to give a testimony of Dr. Lee Robertson. Hey. You know who he is? I know of him. I've heard of him. I've heard of him. I'll have to educate you on something. But uh, anyway, his testimony was that he that he goes back to what he said in the right course was a Sunday school teacher when he was a kid, Miss Daisy Hall. Oh, I can miss our though. And so, uh, I, you know, sometimes the seeds planted, and as we well know, when they're teenagers, a lot of time they vary a little bit, you know. But uh, we're a lot of turn boy, and they'll, you know, they'll in there, uh, you know. My kids, they never did openly rebel, but they. Secretly, they didn't like Daddy being gone so much, building the church church, you know. And so, but as time goes on, they see more and more and more, and you see more out of them, you know. And so, uh, and, and all them are saved. I, I know that, you know, shadow of a doubt, you know. But uh, uh, those, those early years, when you just really get it in there, you know, get it pumped in there, it'll, it'll remain. And uh, God do something to that, down the road. Okay, uh, it was test time tonight, and so. You, since we got, uh, uh, Jim was out, got two more out, and they're ready, and you can take them at the right time or something, and if, if you want to, if you don't, and I told you in your situation, but 
you'll have to just catch up because we'll have one more one more Wednesday, okay? So that's up to you, okay? I have them ready. Uh, if if you want to take it, you don't want. Brother Bussell, you're taking yours already, so. Are they multiple? Are they multiple choice? No, I'm sorry, they're not. But they're just 20, 20 of them, I think. So they're they're easy. But uh, anyway, you can decide while we go. We won't we we'll let you get started. So, but either one is fine with me in this particular situation, okay? All right, tonight we're starting what I classify the life of Isaac, but it's really a continuation of Abraham for a couple of chapters. Do all of you have those uh, those uh, those Isaac copies? I just got them today. Yeah, you should. I got them last week. This this, this one. Could. Yes, uh -huh, that's right. You, you got them, brother Boston? You just handed them out. No, I can't. I can't give you a take of that. Okay. Isaac, did you bring them? Yeah, I have them right here. Notes on the life of Isaac. Right, yeah, right. Well, you don't have the one that's on the top. Maybe it's uh, it was, uh, oh, well, it was uh, it there's was a bold, an overview. The bold print. Yeah, well, we too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. That's here. That may have been it. I may have given it to you, but bring it up front if you would, please, because you know, ahead of the others, right? <laughs> so, all right. Let me also, because I might not think about it. Let me apologize in the class because of our time, because we're gone. I simply can't do it any faster, <laughs> you know, so we're going about lacking some, and so I'll be talking with you about next go around as you're going to continue and what we're, what we're planning there, and so, uh, and I'm also working on missions conference and a multitude of other things, you know, and so, uh, uh, so retirement's not what it's cracked it to be, okay, <laughs> but, uh, okay, let's look at, the, and, and like I say, uh, we're going to see Isaac, but then it's actually, there's a couple of free chapters that Continues Abraham. I told you I was doing that. Probably would have been better to do Abraham. But my notes are like my notes, and I'm gonna redo all of them just for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will redo them a little bit as we go on, but uh, in there. And so, and so, uh, so Isaac. Now we, we're to the point where Isaac now has been promised. Okay. And so we, we Genesis 22, uh, and then Sarah here starts uh, the first part. Of some, but before then, in Isaac, we have where he's uh, uh, he's been born, uh, and that's the child of promise, and things goes on there. I may be a little ahead of myself. Let me let me recall. No, we we did a eleven. Okay, that's where we are. And so we're going to have the, and we're going to talk about tonight the most important parts of these chapters. Okay, because I, I hope you've read them if you haven't. We just there's no time to do otherwise, but. Uh, chapter 22, of course, becomes one of the mountaintops uh, where uh, where he is to be offered, be, be sacrificed. We've talked about it a little bit in many case. Most of them are familiar, but we can't rely on that, okay? And so we'll talk about that. So it's submissive son uh, is that first part in there. The second was a gentle groom, and this is when he meets Rebecca for the first time. And uh, then the praying parent, because it, it seems that these early from Abraham, from Sarah, and on, uh, these ladies uh, that married the patriarchs couldn't have children at first. Right. So it's a prayer thing. The copy cat who did the, the like his father did the lie when he left the land, the willing worker and the frustrated father. It's often been said that Isaac is the mediocre son of a great father <laughs> uh, because Isaac's life really is not, besides him getting married, and besides Genesis 22, it's kind of a, not any great things go on, okay, but but he's in the line, and God gives him the covenant again, and we'll see it. So he remember that's the important thing there, and the covenant keeps handed down, and uh, he'll, he'll give him that. And so it, well, that's just an overview there. You get an outline ahead of time. So turn the page to I-2, and let's look at the notes on the life of Elijah. Uh, we'll go back and pick up a little bit here. His birth and time of weaning, the miracle of Isaac's birth, of course, we know that was promised. Isaac uh, means laughter, and you have a fourfold type, a type there that Isaac becomes, and we're not going to do the types there tonight, but you can see those for what they are. Isaac circumcised on the eighth day. Abraham's 100 years old. Isaac weaned, and Abraham made a great feast, and that feast was uh, Sarah really comes to the forefront and says, I want, I want Ishmael. Now, Ishmael at this time is 14. Uh, it's been four, Ishmael, remember Ishmael? Ishmael was 14 years old when 
Isaac is born and ate and from side, like the covenant says, and then uh, and then has the great feast for it, okay? And so at this point in time, Sarah wants uh, Sarah wants uh, Hagar and the son gone, okay? Because now they have a child of promise. I can't explain the things to you. You can't explain the harshness of some of these decisions. But anyway, God actually okayed it to Abraham. <laughs> He had in mind what was going to happen there. He actually uses in the New Testament an analogy in there in a couple of places. And so where the, the where the, the bond woman is cast out and the and the promised seed is the is the heir. And he used that in the New Testament also in a couple of areas to show us uh, in bondage and in grace, you know. And so you can say that for yourself sometime in there. But uh, so they're cast out. Uh, Ishmael uh, mocks Isaac, and, and, he, uh, and when he's eight, 14 years old, there, and she requests him, Sarah requests him to be out. And so then God confirms Abraham the casting out, as I said there, verses uh, that's 21, 12, and 13. The two seeds will be two great nations, and you have the place in Galatians, it's the allegory there. Everybody knows what an allegory is. Huh? What's an allegory? It is almost a parable. <laughs> you know, it carries, the same, a parable. carries the same idea. Is that an allegory? You know, is it, something that that shadows something else and, and brings out another truth in it. Okay, but they use that in the New Testament. Then I'll be honest with you: the allegory in the New Testament is kind of hard to decipher what God wants you to have out of it. Because I've studied it out before. Okay, but but it's there for a purpose. Okay, but we we'll see what's going on there now. In the den, number two there, Hagar and Ishmael is sitting in the wilderness with, with loss of water, prepares to die, and God rescues them. And verse 19, with a miracle of water, across the great nation, and then he takes a wife of the land of Egypt. Now, I want, if I miss this, I want to go back. I don't understand how, there's no mention, but later on, when Isaac dies later down the road, uh, uh, the, 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 the two sons bury him. So there's some kind of relationship that's going on there or something or another. Now, then chapter 21, the rest of it, I read all of this today, but Isaac lives with his father Abraham many days in the land of the Philistines. So it's years go by, okay? And so we get to 22 now, chapter 22. Uh, chapter 22, of course, is the, is the, the famous story of, of, of uh, Abraham and Isaac, and he's to sacrifice Isaac. Now remember, when you look at this, the main thing to remember is he's a child of promise given to him by the Lord. It's by miracle. And all of a sudden now, God says, I want you to go sacrifice your son. Now, right, right. What are you talking about, Willis? I don't understand it. You know, I don't, you know, I know I, from backside, you know what God was doing, you know, but let's look at it out of the notes. You read the story, and so out of the notes, the proposed offering by Isaac, and uh, impress it his coward because you can preachers make all kind and sometimes they make loosely attached application. <laughs> sometimes it's right there, you know. There's two kinds of preaching. There's no three four kinds of preaching, but you gotta be a little bit wary of any preacher, and I can talk about preachers I are one. <laughs> but you can talk about it because I've known preachers who have something they wanna say and they find them a scripture that seems to go along with it, you know. I'm not saying that's entirely wrong in social matters and this kind of thing for God says in the heart. But the better way is to be in the scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit of God to open up what your people needs. Because after all, a preacher is to be a shepherd to the sheep. And if you don't meet the needs of the sheep, you're not doing anything. You know, so he's got to, you know, I, I, have, a little, I have a problem. I'm going to say this and go on YouTube. But I have a problem with, with, with pastors who want to be an evangelist. You know, you can't, you can't <clears throat> pastor a church and not be at home. You just can't do it if it's any size at all, you know. And so, sometimes along the line we have to decide are we pastors or evangelists when, we, when God calls us to preach, you know. And uh, so, but I've got some friends are that way. And if they, if they ever get a hold of this, maybe they'll still be friends. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so God tempts Abraham. Now, James 1.13, I want you to understand, very, understand there are 
two types of translation of, of, of testing and tempting, okay? James says the Lord never tempts anybody to do wrong. Now that seems like God, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And James, if we were to understand, God never tempts anybody to do wrong. And so sometimes the word is used like it is here. It's not a temptation to do something out there. It's a testing to build your faith, okay? And a lot of times we have that. And uh, the, uh, one, of the, one of the Bibles I have, I cannot remember the name of it now, it has a lot of stuff in the back, uh, references in the back and everything. Uh, but uh, it has uh, it has a thing in the front of it showing your faith, and it has a set of doorsteps. And it says that every time you have a testing of the Lord, it's to build your faith. And the next time you should be on this doorstep. And the next time your te your testing may be a little bit harder, <laughs> building your faith, and just going up the doorstep to finally get to the place to where you are really relying on God and you understand what He's done for you. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's testing God does sometime for a purpose. Uh, you got to be to a certain place for God to use you in certain conditions, you know. And so missionaries, when I have missionaries, missionaries need to have great faith <laughs> because uh, when they get into a foreign place, uh, when you step, they say, I've never been to Japan, but uh, they say when you step off the plane in Japan and you rush toward the whatever system they use, trolley system, whatever they use, that they just push and shove and cram in there like sardines and say, but all of them looks alike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and when we're foreigners, everybody looks alike, right? And so you step into another world and here I am and I don't understand the custom, I don't understand the people, I can't tell apart, this kind of thing, you know, and so you have to really trust the Lord to, you know, in that, and, and that's just one of the situations there. Tr uh, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. And so, um, so you have the what happens, and now the command here uh, was to sacrifice. Now this is something bad around in commentaries. I put it: Did it, God ever demand human sacrifice? He's on the son. Yeah, he's on the son. I mean, no, animal sacrifice. Uh, it was animal sacrifice. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's it, it, it's we just consider uh, for uh, people sacrifice is pagan. pagan right. Yeah, so. This is a little bit hard to understand here in that respect. We just know that God had a purpose in it. So the command was sacrifice. The place was land of Moriah. And notice Moriah was three and a half, and we'll get there in a minute, but Moriah was the latest part of the temple, question mark. We think it's where the uh, Dome of the Law, we think it's today where the uh, Islam temple, temple tabernacle sits. And the old place of the temple is right there. And I've seen, maybe you have too, but... They're, they've been for years trying to get the plan, fruit, all that, to rebuild the temple uh, there. And it's right it. down the... There you go. Yes, yeah, so 100 yards down from the other one there, you know. And so, But they think that's where it is anyway, is what I'm getting at here. So Moriah becomes the place, the holy place. Go to Moriah. Some reason God wouldn't go to Moriah. So we'll see why, and we'll see how this... The, the obedience of Abraham, the trip. Now... Uh, I always think about this. Written what Sarah was saying to Abraham that night before he left. Because <laughs> it said early in the morning. Next morning he got up and left. And so I mean, Sarah just kind of talked to him all night, don't you? I mean, it was her son, her only son, the one she's going to ever have, you know. And she'd enjoyed him since the miracle of having that. I mean, my soul, she was, what was she, nine? Whatever, you know. The ladies were in last week. There's a little spot in there when, when, uh, when, on the plane of memory when she laughed, when, when, they, when Sarah laughed at what the Lord said. The Lord said, said that's what I was saying, is that why she <laughs> named him? I, yeah, she, the Lord told him what name. Yeah, because you know, she name laughed. Her. Yeah, yeah, it had a little play there. Right, yeah. Someone once said, God has a sense of humor, I don't know about that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, there's a couple of verses there that, in the Bible is kind of funny in that, that she, when she laughed, it was not only because the Bible says she was, beyond age, but it says she was beyond age and she was beyond I'm using that for it, she was beyond the enjoyment mm -hmm. of such a relationship. I don't know if you caught that when you read it or not, you know. But that's what she that's what she was saying, you know, in, in those verses there. And so uh, it, so she knows she's not going to have another one. And so they take off and I always thought the family situation there that night before he left. Now that took some we call it, uh, in the city, we call it intestinal fortitude. In the country where I come from, it's called guts. 
<laughs> you know, to be able to, uh, you know, for him to withstand <clears throat> Sarah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced, now you may not be, I'm convinced that Sarah's background and all that, Sarah didn't want her son to go. I don't like any mama would have wanted her son to go. Abraham is simply obeying what God said. And he had, but he'd already had the background. God already told him, he said, you got this place you live in, go somewhere when you get there, I'll tell you, and all through this stuff, you know. So he had a background already. You think, he told, her, what God you think he told her what his I mean, the intention was there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, my thinking my thinking was he did, but, yeah. but he may not have. I don't like no, The Bible doesn't say that. I think, he, you know, it, I think maybe he just trusting God, I think, in himself. He had to knowingly take his son up there and trust in God. All he knew was God said go sacrifice him. Right. And, you know, of course, we'll see later he had some. Okay, the trip. Now, this is important, but you're all familiar with it. It keeps coming up in the Bible of the trip. They arrived on the third day, a total of four days. And this is the exact time to pass over lamb from, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, when it was instituted in Exodus when the children of Israel were going out. The Passover lamb was to be one without spot or blemish. Shut it up, watch it three days, and, and kill it. As it was the 10th of Nisan, which is our April. And on the 14th day, you slay it and put the blood on the doorpost, you know, for the family. And so it, it exactly fit here uh, what would be later the Passover, which is a type of Jesus Christ coming in. And on earth, Jesus Christ uh, was on this earth, watched for the same, for take the days for years, uh, and, then, and then slain, you know. So we have common idea there in Scripture. People debate how long, what age he was and all that, you know. But he, I think he fit the Passover lamb. I personally can't explain it, but I believe that he was, I believe Jesus was crucified on Passover. Right. Now most people put it somewhere else because they can't get that Passover in, you know, when they read the scriptures, you know, and this kind of thing. Well, just like them putting the lamb, they kept it in their house at that time, that's what I was told. Well, it, it, I don't know, it was shut up so it could be seen. And from you know. what I, I was told, or, or I read it somewhere or whatever, and Jesus came on Palm, you know, with that Palm Good Friday, came in there, and then he was in the temple for four days, and then with, it was the same timeline you're talking. Well, yeah, but Passover. our time-honored uh, independent Baptist most of them want one crucifixion on Wednesday because they want to get a full, a full, a full three, full three days and three nights of Jones in the belly of the whale, which right. Jesus would be. You know, but you go back and read it. I can, I can bring it, show it to you. Uh, Hebrew language, uh, you can, you can get it because they consider it to be part of the day a whole day in Scripture, and so you can, you so you can put it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't, I don't argue with people about it because I really don't care. <laughs> I'm just glad he did, you know. And so, right. Amen. With no res with no resurrection day. That was what knocked him. Right. What it was. Anyway, uh, but the, the the background of the uh, understanding the uh, Passover lamb, the obedience of Abraham when he went, and we got that the faith of Abraham. He said when they said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I and the lad will will we'll go up the mountain, and we'll come back from the mountain." <laughs> You know, pretty good faith. He believed in the supernatural birth of his son, so he believed in the supernatural resurrection of his son. And generally, here is the idea that Abraham believed that God demanded that he offer him, that he would resurrect him. That's the general idea there, that he didn't know if he, I mean, he, he had full intention, <coughs> to say, say, of, um, of that getting up there, so when he you know, when he tied him down, and, and this is the submissive fun, that's part. He was not a boy. Right. <laughs> he was a grown guy. Probably could whoop his daddy, you know. But he let his daddy tie him on the altar. You know, that's, so Isaac, when I say he was a mediocre son, I mean in what's written about him, but he wasn't mediocre at that time. Uh, he allowed his daddy to do that. And so he'd have some good, he'd have some good Bible training somewhere in <laughs> And so that, that was the idea. And so uh, the great question, and everybody, this is the question here. The question was <clears throat> going up there, and so they had the, they had the, they were going up, and they had the wood. And they were carrying a lighter, a torch, or whatever, up there going up. And, and, and Isaac, the boy, says, 
you know, they say, well, we got all this for it, for it but said, you know, where is the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? That indicates that Isaac didn't really know what was going on a whole lot at that point. Right. You know, somewhere between halfway at the mountain and the top, he, you know, he let him tie him down, okay? But, but he said, where's, and so the great answer there is, and you know the story, the great, the great question, that's where's the lamb? And it is, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And that's literally taken two ways. I believe I'm going to be taken two ways. God will supply me a sacrifice, which he did later. The, the realm, um, it's indicated, which we believe, as a knife was beginning to come down, ready to come down from Abraham's hand, lo and behold, over there, right, right beside him, by a miracle, there's a ram caught in the thicket. You know, and God showed him that's a sacrifice. You know, so, but he's, and the other one, of course, is prophetical. Uh, situation is God will provide Himself a sacrifice. That's Calvary. So I believe you could. I believe you could take it either way, and it would be right. Okay. And so that's just great. But you always have the Calvary connection there in those things. Uh, you notice the willing submissive fun we talked about a type of Christ also. Now the greatest type of Christ we won't get to a whole lot in this class was Joseph. Joseph fits type of Christ all the way down. Okay, but this one you find Isaac here, uh, the, the, the son here. This is where the provision, uh, it, God once again in his name, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Another another name of God there. Uh, covenant reaffirmed there, and that's, I thought that was quite interesting in my reading when, when as soon as, as God, I don't remember, it's in the Bible, you that have notes in your footnotes in your Bible, there were four great testings. They came up on Abraham, and I can't remember. Wants to leave your land? Well, I don't remember. This was the fourth great testing here, and so it talks about the Lord. The Lord knew all the time. Of course, we believe the Lord knew all the time. But Abraham didn't benefit when he gave this smile. This was the biggest test he had. You know, the other part were small compared to this. The biggest test he had, and he passed this test with on Mount Moriah. God then reaffirmed again you know and of course when God does this I'm convinced that it's more reaffirming for the person than for God just you know doing it again it, it needs to be reaffirmed for the person okay now you picked up things before I'm sure some of you have or whatever anything you want to say about this Mariah this Genesis 22 Mariah we just want to understand it okay that's the big thing alright chapter 23 you turn the page there it's all about Sarah the whole chapter uh it is interesting. I got to note that she's the only woman whose age is mentioned in Scripture. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't. You know, actually, I, I forget it every time I go back over notes again. But I even read that in some commentary today. You know, and so uh, only woman, uh, mother of all believers, the mother's promised seed. You know, for New Testament reference. She dies at age 127, uh, 37 years old uh, 30, uh, since the birth of Isaac. So she had him. She had him 37 years. Uh, Sarah's buried at the end of a Hittite field, Machpelah, in the cave. Abraham purchased for 40 shekels of silver, 52 pounds, 10 shillings. I cannot tell you whether that is in American dollars, but it'd be easy to find that okay. But but the thing about it, I reread today, and, and Abraham wanted to bury her. Now, I, I go on record, okay, and I don't fuss with people. I'm not mad at people, think, but I still want to be buried. I don't want to be cremated. Because I think there's enough in the Old Testament to that it's a pagan idea, okay? And we do it because of money. And I understand that. And I'm not, I got friends, I got people I, in my church that I preach to who do it, okay? I'm just saying for me, I've asked my wife, just go ahead and bury me somewhere, okay? I already got my plot. My plot. I already know I got two plots, my, my, my parents and mine. We've got about eight places left, and so... I'm going to be buried back down home in South Georgia where my, our little, hey, you probably know this, our first baby was born, it was nine months full, uh, born dead. So we got a little son i never seen before. Mm -hmm. said, you know, so buried right there, and uh, we're going to be buried right there with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, listen, you ain't not there. And most kids, and no use in it, they don't go to cemetery every week. Why would you? Mm -hmm. You know, so you go every once in a while, make sure it looks decent. And, 
he just put Eddie to the thing, you know, this kind of thing. So, uh, and, and so he, he went, he said, I'm on, I, I didn't mean to get off on that, but I, so he said, I want, I'm on Barry. So he went down this field, had a cave in it, hit tanks. And he, he said, no, he said, listen, your prince of the land said, you can have the field at the cave. And he said, no, 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 no. I said, you know, what's it, you know, what it, and the guy told him, no, he said, here's what it's worth. So he goes that route, okay, he buys the field on my pila. And later we'll find when he dies, he's going to come back, they're going to bring him back there and bury him with Sarah, and even though he has another wife by that time, okay, and my pila, okay. So it's very important. I'm sure you may sermonize it, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I four, next page is, uh, I like this chapter. I, I don't have time to really, I, I've got a, I've got a sermon that I preached probably 20 years ago <laughs> called The Camels Are Coming. <laughs> and it's a sermon on the rapture. <laughs> you know, uh, but sometimes people need to, you have to have another, you have to have someone from somewhere else, you know, because they get tired of hearing the same one, they don't listen, you know. I've heard that 15 times, you know, whatever, you know, so. But in this, if you will, now, not all people believe it's the typology. I admit that, but I, but I believe it's in there and forms that. Uh, I've got the typology here, uh, 22, 23, and 24, a, type, a prophetical typology. 22, a son's offered, corresponds to, to, to the Son of God dying on the cross. 23, wife is laid aside, Sarah dies, and the age we in Israel has been set aside. And then the uh, servant seeks a bride, the uh, Holy Spirit calling out a uh, 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 Calling out of the church for a bride, bride for Christ. Okay, so you can take that and leave it. Maybe you want to preach sometime. Keep it away. Chapter 24, now the types here. Now notice, in here we have uh, four people. Four people, and, and you might should sure remember these. You have Abraham, Isaac, the servant, the unnamed servant, we believe it was Eliezer, the, the servant, and Rebecca. Okay, and so these four are the characters in this story of 24. Abraham is a type of the Heavenly Father who plans a wedding for his son. Now, you remember you, you <coughs> Matthew and other places, you know you're going to have weddings and, and, and there, there will be a church, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay, That's after the rapture. Somewhere in heaven, sometime in heaven. I know the charts show us plenty time, but I've never found where it really tells you exactly when that's going to take place, but it will take place. Okay. And so he becomes a type of the old father. Isaac becomes a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's offered in 22, now awaiting a bride, given all things of the Father, and loves his bride dearly. The third one, the servant here, is really a, really a guy that I really uh, I like. Types of the Holy Spirit came to Mesopotamia for a purpose, to get a bride for Isaac. The Holy Spirit came to get a bride for the son. The servant gave honor and glory to the Father and Son and never focused upon himself. And We'll get into the transaction. You'll see that. And Rebecca's a type of the church where she trusts the servant explicitly. She accepts the gifts given to her. And she asks, and she would, here's what three things she was asked to do. We never, believe a man she had never seen before. That was a servant. Go to a land from which she had never returned. And marry a man she had never seen. <laughs> you know, and she becomes a type of the, that fish church, by the way. You know. There, okay. Now the transaction in this, we'll, we'll take the time to go over the transaction. Though, here Abraham <coughs> tells his servant, his oldest servant, he said, now listen, and he, and he asked that, it's a, it's a way of doing things that meant something. The hand goes under the hip, and you know, and he gives the command to him, and that's like a contract, okay, you might say. And you have a look. Now, I don't want my son, I, I don't want him to marry a wife of this land. I want you to go back to our kinfolk in Mesopotamia and I want you to find her a bride. And I want you to bring that bride back for Now, I didn't go. The servant went. You see where that typology comes in? Like the church, you know? And Jesus came to die for the bride, but the Holy Spirit gets the bride for the son up here in our, in our day, the bride of Christ. And so he says now, to swear not uh, to take a wife from Canaanites because Isaac is the son of promise, heir of the promise, and line of Messiah. Okay. Number two, he puts a hand in the right with him, like I said here in, in B under that, verse 10 to 20, God's selection. Bearing gifts, the servant and his entourage arrive at Haran, Nahor's home. 
The servant asked for a sign or a token of the one lady of God's choice. Should be not gotcha, but God's choice coming for water. When asked for water, she will offer it to the camel. Though he says, "Now, Lord, he gets there, saying, Lord, I, I, look at all these people. I don't know, you know who they are. Let's, let's, I, I believe he's in his mind. Let's expedite. Let me do a good job. Maybe what I'm supposed to do, not tarry long. When, when they come and a maiden comes and I offer, if she offers water. Then, if she offers water of her own will to the camels, also." That's what I want my token to be. And uh, that's what happened. In number three, the lady fulfilling the signs, Rebecca, daughter of Bethuel, the nephew of Abraham. Laban is Rebecca's brother. And that's the household we're dealing with here. Uh, the, the invite to the home of Rebecca seals the choice as God's in the mind of the servant. And so the family's acceptance then. The family recognizes this is from the Lord. The servant takes care of the business at hand before engaging in refreshment. Now, I do not understand here, and, and I'm not reading about it. Uh, the family recognized this is from the Lord. That's Rebecca's family. I do not know their background because when Abraham came out, they weren't Jehovah believers. Right. Okay, but some way God, maybe they weren't, and maybe God some way told them that. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. It just said they recognized this being from, you know, from the Lord. And so they offer refreshments, hospitality, in the day and time, you realize all of the Jesus time, uh, a, a bowl of uh, water for your feet, refreshment for your feet, you know, this kind of thing, was hospitality, you'd be something to eat, this kind of thing. So before he will engage in a refreshment, tell you thing, he says, this is what I've been sitting here for. I mean, he was on the ball. That was what he was doing. Verse 15 and 16. Rebecca goes with the servant the next day, even though the family wishes her to wait several days. They say to him, say, look, What's your hurry? Uh, don't take her away like this right now. Said so we're uh, willing to do it, but can we have a few days to say goodbye and have a feast? I was kind of, no, I got to go. I like this sort of, you know. Uh, I, I, I'm not here on my business. I, maybe I would if it was my business, but it's not my business. And so the next day they go, they, they go and 61 to the The bride, the servant, and the owner arrive home. Arrival is toward evening. Isaac is going to meditate and pray. And Rebecca sees Isaac and steps to the ground, puts on a veil according to the custom of the bride, meaning the bridegroom. But in fact, they see him and she asked the servant, she said, who is that guy coming to meet us? And he said, that's my, that's my, that's my master, or whatever he says, recognizing it would be her husband. And so she covers her face, you know, steps down, and, uh, you know, uh, and the two are married. Now, the story has many implications, many sermons, many whatever you take it there, and you can see that, okay? But I'm just intrigued with the servant going to get a bride, and the bride accepts somebody she's never seen before, and and the servant's all about business. I mean, he's not he's not interested in money out. He just wants he wants to do what he was told. He said what he promised to do, and he, he gets the bride, and we'll find out. Boy, he made a good choice. He made a good choice, you know. From all we know, Sarah and Rebecca and on up, these were nice looking ladies. You know, I mean, we know Sarah was, okay. Right. And we find, we find the same thing happening later now with Rebecca, so she must have been too. Didn't both of them, didn't both of them like say they were sisters because they were worried about Exactly, the... yeah, exactly. If you were turning <laughs> back, it might be here. <laughs> High five. Now this goes back, but it's in chapter of the last days of Abraham. Abraham has a second wife after Sarah died, and Keturah, and has children by there. And he dies at 175 years old. And he blesses Isaac with everything he has. In fact, what he does is he takes, what we'll makes it in this in here? Marriage with the birth of children, that's in there. Uh, and then in the middle of that page, uh, birth and growth of Esau and Jacob. So we get to our main thing tonight. Now, how many of you? Now, don't 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 let us slide through. But if you already know it, don't. I don't need to spend a lot of time there. The story of the birth of Esau and Jacob. Are you familiar? I'm familiar, but not in detail. Okay. I'm not very. I, don't I understand that, purpose. and that's what we're here for. Okay. And so let, let's look if we could uh, here uh, uh, after on, on top of page I five chapter 
chapter 25, marries her to the birth of children. Isaac marries Rebecca, he's 40 years old. Rebecca is barren. So, Isaac knows he's the son of prayer. And so he <clears throat> prays that God give him children. Okay? And so he not only gives them one, he gives them two. <laughs> okay? He gives them twins. Uh, but it's Kyle, I got anywhere you see K and D in my notes, it's Kyle and David, which I talked to you about, but it's spelled out here. The seed of the promise was to be prayed for from the Lord that it might not be regarded merely as a fruit of nature, but he received and recognized as a gift of grace. Uh, and uh, Rebecca conceives there, uh, and he's about 60 years old. The sign of the children struggling the Lord, and, you know, as a pregnant woman, she, the Bible says that she had some problems, you know, I mean, in the birth, I mean, in the care of the children, and she felt within her. And she, she took that as being an evil omen or something wrong with her because they had prayed and it was a child of promise. And so, from that, it's got two nations, two manner of people. That's important to understand. Two kinds of people that are twins. Now, you may have never seen it. I know a man that, uh, in fact, he was my five or six years uh, in charge of our college, ABC College fine man, and he, he had two sons within two years of each other, and their age was, they both, same time in life, the same stipulations, the same home life, the same thing, you know, one goes one way and one goes the other. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was not genetic. <laughs> you know, that was not even environmental. That was the bent. That was what, you know, and people really misuse and, and, and Pious people. If your kids never had a problem, what a wonderful thing that you praise God for that, okay? But if they did, and you be, so I've often thought about forming uh, Parents Anonymous for good Christian parents whose kids have gone wrong and they beat themselves up over. Right. And I know we go back, I know, I know all that, but I also, there are times when everything's been pretty good and the kids still go off, you know, a bent toward that. And the uh, uh, race of a child, what's the verse? What is she doing going up part? Right. Mm -hmm. But on the surface, pious people use that. <coughs> yeah. You know, but that's not what the verse says at all. It's talking about every kid has a bent toward, you know, and you correct that, that nature best you can do, but some of them that bent, I always look at that, oh where you grew up at, but I grew up in pine thicket, you know, and we used to have, we'd bend the little pine trees over, <laughs> use them as a shot, <laughs> you know, get up on them, them sling them over there, you know, it was, you know, and so a, a tree like that, you see, it's, it's when a bend like this, you know, but when the wind's gone, maybe they'll come back up, but I always think of that as an illustration, you know, that in that, because God gave me a great sermon years ago. I was sitting in my office and pretty heavy wind, 35, 40 mile an hour, and the trees were just a going by like we had the other day, almost going, and they were bending halfway over, you know, and and I'd see them, but as long as down here, they were not bending, they were okay. You know, it's the foundation, you know. But, but, but we see here, here are two kids, same household, that will have two different ways they go, okay? And it's important for us to understand there is that, is that you know, don't be good Christian folks over the head because our kids didn't turn out as good as your kids did. Pray for them, help them, you know, be a friend to them, you know, because they are hurting down in here because they think they have their failures, you know. And uh, all is out of sin nature. I was going to say that. I know of a great Christian family that, that you say, well, they had something. We always look, oh, they had something in their house. You don't know about blah, blah, blah. You know, they were a good family. And their boy got off in drugs. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's just, it just who you got with and this kind of thing. You know? So I just thought, though, that it's been going on my hobby horses for several years, you know, that, uh, and that I think there needs to be a parent anomaly, to be honest with you. Right. That you can come together and share your story and say, look, 
you know, we understand we're not beating your head about it. Don't have, don't live with a guilt complex, you know. Do what you can do, and if there's something you did, repair it if you can, but you can't live the rest of your life with a guilt complex. Right. You know, you try to live your life with a guilt complex over anything, you you dead meat in the water. I mean, you, you just can't do it. Anyway, what that's worth, that doesn't do with a lesson, okay? But, uh, uh, so they, two manner of people, the elder shall serve the younger, okay? Uh, and then the, the birth and growth of Esau and Jacob. The birth, Esau comes out of the womb with hairy red. <laughs> hairy red. Uh, in fact, Edom, that will come later from him, Edom, it means red. Okay? And so he comes out like that. Uh, and then Jacob uh, caught hold of Esau's heel. And he was known as the heel catcher. By, you asked about names, I day, some different names in here. Isaac, about 60 years with birth of the boys. The boys in the family. Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field. Amen. Deer hunter. You got to watch your deer hunter. Mm -hmm. And you got to watch the other one too. Esau. Okay, thank you, Brother Buster. Okay. And so Esau, Esau forfeits his birthright. Very important here. And you know the story. He'd been out hunting. <coughs> Now, I'm not a hunter, okay? But do you get real tired out hunting sometimes? Or? How far you go out in Huh? How far you drag that deer back? <laughs> okay. He'd been out of hunting anyway, whatever he's hunting. And he came back very, very tired from the field. And uh, Jacob has a meal prepared there. And I wouldn't doubt but what Jacob did this on purpose, too. <laughs> you know, he said, he's going to be hungry when he gets back. <laughs> And so he does that as Jacob barters food for the birthright. Esau said, feed me with that red. Called Edom lentils there. And so Esau despises the birthright. This is what the Bible says. The day of the birthright. And that's what we talked to many may not be with the Old Testament birthright. Uh, the, the birthright, the one the birthright, which always uh, somehow went to the oldest son. Okay? And it involved, number one, the headship, ruler over the family. It involved the priestly function. Now, today we live in the Western world. Western world is quite different than Eastern, in Old Eastern. In the family set up, uh, here we, you know, we find a, a young lady we see and it's love at first sight, maybe, or whatever, and we have our own little family. You know, we use the verses, you know, leave your father and your mother, you know. But in the old days, it, they lived in clans. And the priesthood function was the oldest use of that clan. And it clan may be three generations, that kind of thing. And then when he died, the next one moved up. So, it was in, so this was the old, this was the birthright. One of it was the priesthood fun, function uh, of the clan of the family. Number two, the title to the blessing of promise, the messianic promise. Uh, and then third, and this was later, but but a, a portion here, the the birthright included a double portion of the inheritance, uh, and so they uh, they had headship and everything plus the double of inheritance there. And so it was very uh, very good thing, uh, you know. But yet you had responsibility. Esau knew the value, but attached no value to it. Esau only valued sensual enjoyment of the present. He could not comprehend the value of spiritual things and the, and, and the future thereof. Uh, and so, uh, Kyle and David, Ishmael excluded from the promised blessing because he was begotten according to the flesh, and Esau lost it because he was disposed toward the flesh. That's what they say in the end there. And so, you, you see the family problems, and you saw the personal problems. And you can just go anywhere you want to go in the Bible, I mean, in your mind, and you can just think what was going on with the family and with Jacob and Esau. You know, it, it can go, and nobody knows. It doesn't say what it was. You don't know how Jacob was thinking, you know how Esau was thinking. You don't know, you just know the, you just know the dispensation of the parents, you know. But anyway, uh, in chapter 26, you next page I-6 there, we have then uh, the things that, uh, uh, did I miss something there? Uh, the blessing is somewhere. Fourth is the birthright. Five. Confirm. Okay, we have a 
26 kind of interlude looks like. The covenant confirmed to Isaac, uh, dwelling in Gerob because famine's in the land. We've heard that before as Abraham did. Isaac lies about Rebekah. She is my sister. Then Malay recognized the ploy, confronts Isaac, confronts Isaac, charges no man touch Rebekah. And there's a question. We think of Benelay was not the personal name and maybe another name for Pharaoh just because of Bubalek's and different, you know. I don't know that. That just could be, okay? Or it might have been his, his real name. I don't know. God blesses Isaac uh, in the land that we're talking about, in the land of Abimelech, okay? But God blesses, I need to, I need to explain my little handwritten note. Uh, Brother Bosa said he couldn't always read my notes. And I said back to him, I can't either. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, he, he in, in the land now, but in the land down there in this place where he's gone, he sows the land, in other words, he's given land, and he reaps a hundredfold. Now, what that means out there, 25 to 50 folds the better, I don't mean it's better than 100. It meant that in the land, if you reap, if you somebody had a good crop and you had 25 or 50 fold better, than you had had the year before, that's considered really good, okay? And so, uh, I could give you some farming background on that, but I don't know if we can have time. I, I'm a, I'm a big, was a big supporter before the late girls come in, of the future farmers of America. Uh, I was, uh, I was club president, and uh, I came to leadership clinic here at this, uh, this camp out here, on 30, off 36, uh, way back when I was senior. And, uh, you know, but we only had boys at that time. You know, no stinking girls in the future farmers of America. You know, they were the future homemakers of America. That's right. exactly, okay? Mm -hmm. You remember that back then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's but the I, same I, reason I got out of Boy Scouts. I watch them on RFD TV sometime, <laughs> and they have the, you know, <laughs> national vice presidents of girls, <laughs> you know, their conditions, and I, I watch them over the while, see what's going on. But, uh, uh, but um, uh, we had, one of my projects in future farmers of America was, uh, was in the days they were changing uh, corn production. And you used to plant corn 16 inches apart. And then as better fertilizer and conservation came along, almost now you go buy a cornfield, you see it's almost <laughs> like that, right? But then you, back in my, you, and so we did an acre plot and did the new stuff to it, technique to it, and, and you, you kept up your project there, and so you saw what you could produce on that acre. And so it was true. I was able to do almost double the production my daddy was getting. And I mean, daddy, daddy was all right with it, you know. We only raised corn feed the hogs, you know. So, but uh, but that was interesting. But that was too future on America. Future on America not in here. Should have been. Uh, I'm gonna have to write that in the Anderson translation. Anyway, uh, so in the land here, okay. Uh, so so God blessed him in the land's idea here. It becomes very great in the land. The Philistines and envy him and, and stop the wells dug by Abraham's servants years before. Uh, the wells, I've heard sermons on wells, by the way. You, you may have too, okay? And then because of that, he was asked to leave the area. And so Isaac the well digger. Uh, and so Isaac, part of Isaac's reputation is, and his background is, that he, he cleaned out the wells that Abraham had dug uh, and got them growing again. Now, it was important, but preachers have used that and how we analogize, you know. Uh, we need to be cleaning the wells out in modern society, <laughs> the spiritual wells. <laughs> you can go anywhere you want to go with that, you know. You can name, you can name stuff, you know, been put in the, well, the, the good wells of the Bible, you know, and they need to be get the trash out, you know. And a lot of preachers have used that in that way of, of, of the well digger here, okay? Clean clean the wells out. Clean the wells. We need to clean the wells out. And uh, I probably have too, some more than that. Uh, and uh, they two wells dug and they stroll over. The third Rehoboth, you know that name. Rehoboth uh, was not. And then another famous name comes in here. The Lord appears and promises to bless him at Beersheba. And you've heard that in, in Scripture before. Isaac bless an altar. And Isaac and Abimelech signed a peace treaty. And so, uh, a grief of mine to Isaac and Rebekah at age 40, Esau takes two Hittite women as wives. And that was a no-no. Uh, Hittite, like what's the... Hittites were just a, 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 a group of people like the... Uh, Amorites. Amorites and the Parasites. Yeah, and the, 
all those you read about. But, but yeah. the interesting thing about Hittites, so until so just several years ago, uh, people who didn't believe the Bible, uh, you know, made fun of the Bible because it had them in there, and it said there were no such people. There's no record of them. But then archaeological digs found stuff that proved they were. Well, yeah. I mean, more or less, there were clans. I mean, they were split off into clans. Yeah, I've, I've never studied the Hittites as such, but you could go a bunch of ice. computer, but good computer, computer, put a search, search engine. I'm sure you'll get something up there, okay? And, and it would be interesting. I need to do that just for questions, like that, all right? But uh, yeah, uh, but but he should not. They were pagan. He should not have married pagan. You know that. But at this time, he was. You know, he was, because we're skipping it, he, he was mad. I mean, you know, he was upset and this kind of thing. Now, look at, look at this one down there now. Uh, Isaac determines to pass a blessing, and Rebecca contrives to get Jacob the blessing. So, <laughs> so, so uh, the passing the blessing on to Esau would have been the normal thing. But Rebecca overhears it, and uh, she wants to get Jacob blessed. That was her boy. And so uh, we, you get into the prophecy there that Esau would sold his birthright, gives you the ages there. Jacob gets the blessings out of Esau, the firstborn. Uh, Jacob's blessing, Esau's remorse and hate. <coughs> Jacob's blessing comes from Isaac. He and uh, he, he says, my brother supplanted me twice, my birthright and my blessing. Jacob means supplanter, and, uh, and and we see here that Esau hates Jacob after killing. And with the help of Rebecca, Jacob flees to Haran. Rebecca would not see him for 20 years, if at all, and Isaac dies later. But, but just if you know the story is that as he, as he was going to give the blessing uh, to Esau, uh, es uh, Jacob gets some animal skin with hair on it. And remember, Esau was hairy, and Isaac couldn't see, and so he he came in and, and he told him that he was his brother, that he was Esau. When he was about to give the blessing, and Isaac said, "I believe I'm not." Isaac said, "You don't sound like that. He's always I am." <clears throat> and so he gives the blessing to Jacob instead of Esau. It's true. Well, Esau's pretty mad. Remember, he's the hunter. Remember, he's the one that wears the gun. Remember, you know that he said, and he is hot. Uh, and so he's gonna he's gonna get Jacob. And so Mama says. I know what you need to do. You need to pack your little bag, and you need to you need to go as fast as you can over our kin folks. Hey, would would God have favored Jacob to to have it happen? Well, there was a, the thing of the, the young, you know, the the older. It's all through the Bible. The older serve the younger. You're right. You know, yeah, yeah. This is one of those things that you can't say Jacob was right, but you're gonna you're gonna see later he gets exactly what he sows. When he sold it up to Laban. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing. But in all of this, you got to remember that, that uh, you remember later on that Rahab the harlot was in the line of the Messiah. Uh, you got to remember that in our stories coming here, we're going to have a uh, Tamar, I believe it was, was in the line of the Messiah. God did something. God and God, I can't understand. Right. What I can't understand later that I cannot understand in the middle, in the mid, in the uh, centuries uh, A.D., I don't understand how God worked through the Catholic Church, <laughs> you know, but He did. Yeah, He kept scriptures, He kept everything, He was all in, in control of the Catholic Church. You know, so uh, when I when I kind of urge you to take the Baptist history, you'll see all that. Okay, uh, and, but but God, but God works in mysterious ways and wonders to the whole. Okay, uh, and so He He uses. His plan is not going to change. So we wonder why he uses people and things that he does. We don't understand, but 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 he gives us the story of how it happened. Okay? Right, right. And we can't we can't give you the right and the wrong though because Jacob was wrong. But the Bible says that his brother Esau was profane in who he was right. and didn't say a blessing. And so like David to Jacob, okay, now, even though he was, he was, uh, well, it tells what he was. Right. Even his name shows what he was, a supplanter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was, in other words, in other words, he didn't mind lying a little bit, but he got him right away. Here, now, that's the thing about it. We're going to get to where 
See, there's a difference. I've got to say here, there's a difference in getting saved and turn your life over to the Lord. Are you with me? The, the people, we only have one restriction against saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. And I believe that includes repentance, which a lot of people don't believe anymore. Right. You know, but in other words, I don't believe you just say the words and you're saved. When you give your heart to the Lord, you're saved. But I'm one of those that kind of, I guess I'm a little Calvinist, but I'm not sure, but but I believe that after salvation, most people, there comes a time when they come with a decision to make that I either really get them close to the Lord or they can serve Him or they remain or go backwards. That's just my belief in people I know it. what the Bible kind of says, I think, you know. And I don't believe in that, uh, you know, we don't believe in a uh, second blessing. We believe in two, three, and four, and five, six, seven blessings, you know. Amen. But spiritually, where you know the charismatics believe, the, the assembly of God believes, the church of God believes that you you have a getting saved time, if you want to call it that, but you get a second blessing when you're really saved. <laughs> you know. Well, they believe you can fall. Not once saved, always saved. That Most I believe you fall for grace. Right. right. Yeah. But I've never had one. They believe that speeding is. Incorrect when you're supposed to blood, when you're supposed to obey the magistrate of the land according right. to the Romans. But if you go in 69 and 60 miles on, you get caught or you save your loss. You pay the fine, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. So they can't answer those kind of questions. Okay? You're, you're right. Anyway, uh, but we'll see how that all all comes out here. And so uh, and and so if you will, I think any any, any, any observations, questions. I just want to make sure you get the points of it on I six. The covenant confirmed. Isaac and then the covenant passed on to Jacob. So Jacob takes off. You got this, you got that, you don't have the next notes again. Okay. No problem. I take the test off. And on top you're gonna find on top you're gonna find uh, study notes or next week. Down in the middle of the pipeline. Test number five. Chapter 27 now says test number two. This well, is we're, study notes. we're rolling. <laughs> Thank you. Who did one? Yes, sir. The two topics are study notes on two people we hadn't had yet. Okay. And then you got the notes for Virginia. Everybody got the notes then? Yes, sir. Okay. You got study notes, the first two are study notes on the two people we have not had tests on. Including tonight means you're going to have three tests. <laughs> okay, somewhere along the way. Uh, okay, and so we also, now, I did this because of the fact that you two guys have the book, so you can be, you know, but because of, of, of time and everything, and what we need to be, I shot these for you folks right out of the, the, the green woman's in book, okay? And it's laid out, and that's the only way I need to get through Jacob. So, we're looking we'll here. Jacob's, uh, page 53, it says what it says there at the bottom of the page, shot out of Wilmington. Uh, it says that Jacob, it's an overview of Jacob. But once again, the, the, one of these I give you an overview. The devising brother, which we just talked about, okay, and, and getting the verse right, the deceitful son, Got the blessing we got down that for the dreaming pilgrim. That's where we'll be in a minute. The love struck suitor. You know, right. we'll only have one unmarried in here tonight. But one of these days, the apple of your life will die. Come on, okay. And you're gonna be your wife like Abraham was. When, I mean, when, like Adam was when he woke up when God made Eve. He's gonna say, "Wow." <laughs> That's a wild way. It's actually in Hebrew at the end there. You see, wow. Uh, so these are right out of that book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is a cool book. You ever get yeah. Up everybody there? need. We'll be, we'll be using on and on. In fact, if I probably would do it again, I might just take the book and use it for our textbook in Genesis. I mean, without having all my notes, I was thinking to have one. But brother Buzz, what did that cost? Well, you can buy them in you, price. Well, you just got one the other day. Though. What? Uh, it was like twenty-three dollars. Okay, is that was that used but good condition? It was or? used but good. He got right. used but excellent. 
Okay. Worth about thirty dollars. The website that they use that I have used, they actually tell you on there what condition it is. You know, excellent used, excellent used goods. His is brand new. Well, most of them are used. Even the is your, to get is your used <laughs> good is your used good is it does it have any markings? Just a few. Okay. The used excellent won't have any. In it. No, it don't. And then you can get new. Like the new is it's probably like going. Well, the new is probably what forty something dollars or. Uh, Probably more. <clears throat> hard, it charges a lot for those new ones. It's an excellent it's book. It's an old book, though. But well, when, you, ones, when you look for something and you like that book, you, you go to there, you go to Alibus, and you search engine, and you'll see what they got for their clearinghouse. They get them from all different places, but they got a book in there again. I bought three books for 98 cents on them the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Little small thing in Revelation. I want to do okay. But uh, yeah, you, you you when you get some money, you need to get that get that book in hand because you may not like I because I think get it but I don't think you can download anything on it. So uh, now we were able to get for the upcoming doctrine's book uh, it, that is being used is a is a download free. And so some of those you're going to get now where you can just download them free or for a little bit of nothing, you know. Because you young guys probably don't like books. My Wi-Fi is so terrible. I got to stick it. Most young people don't like books. Well, I like reading, but it's mostly electric. That's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. I don't know how old when they came out with Kindle, yeah. reader. You know, yeah, you, you can get all books for free. My, Amazon, you can get them for free. My books. boy's an avid reader with his Kindle, or it used to be. I don't know what he yeah. like. Ninety-nine cents. I don't want that. <laughs> well, anyway. Anyway, we're 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 down uh, here. Uh, I would like for you to learn. Uh, I don't know what'll happen if you don't, but you really need to learn the twelve sons. I mean, yet I mean, the, yet the twelve sons of uh, Jacob because uh, they become the twelve tribes. Yep. You find a couple of them, you know, they just drop out later on down the road and drop back in. Right. Revelation. Yeah. How many wives did he have? Three or four? Four. Yeah, we, I think I've I think we'll see it in a minute down here. Uh, and the enterprise employee, <laughs> the determined wrestler, the enraged brother. I mostly want to get to the the wrestling match. And that's mm -hmm. that's the most important thing in this section. Anyway, and a couple other things. All right, if you're on page 49, it says there, uh, and uh, the first second, first column there, something about the birthright the Lord talked about. But uh, and the deceitful sons. So the right side there, where it says, see the dreaming pilgrim. He takes off. He leaves Beersheba and starts toward Haran. After a long, hard journey, he arrives at Bethel, some 40 miles from Beersheba, but it was called Luz first. So in the old, old ancient, it would be the city of Luz, outside Luz, but it would come Bethel. Some 40 miles from Beersheba, so I was figuring one day how long he took to make a trip. And uh, he made he made 40 miles the first go the first day. And that was for on foot. That's, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's really yeah, and then, but of course, second day I bet he didn't make 40 miles, and so he slowed down further it goes, I would imagine. But I don't know how long, but you can take your thing and figure out how far it was, and you know, and and see how long it took him to get there. Uh, he, you heard there, this is, uh, this, old people, uh, it was a Sunday story, I guess. I heard it, I didn't go to Sunday school. Jacob's Ladder, <laughs> you know, this is the story of Jacob's Ladder uh, in there. The best I remember from, you ever made the things with strings that you, you know, young people would just a regular string and you get things out of that we had and they made Jacob's ladder out of a string. Mm -hmm. You seen that? Mm -hmm. He also made grandpa chew in the back out of a string. <laughs> it does like that, you know. <laughs> and you make all a good string man could really make a lot of things, you know. But anyway, that's what I remembered about you growing up the but anyway, uh, he and so he goes he uh, he uh, using a stone, that's C two for a pillow, Jacob soon falls into an exhausted sleep, and he sleeps, he dreams that there's a ladder from where he is going up to heaven with God at the top. Okay, and so uh, this will be something that stays with him, and it would be me too. It, it was so real because God was giving it to him, you know. It's important to understand that Hebrews chapter 1, Talks about in old days, in days gone by, God revealed Himself by dreams, 
confusion and what, but in latter days he will is by his son, Jesus Christ. And so we don't put too much stock in vision and dreams in our day and time, you know. And because he's given us the Bible now. But he did in that time, he gave dreams and visions and this kind of thing to, to people yeah, as, as it slipped. And so there were angels ministering into him. And so uh, at, at number four, at the top of this ladder, God sees the presence of God himself. And for the first time, here's the voice, voice, Lord's voice confirming to him the covenant. Now this is, we're, we're, uh, we're a new man, Jacob now. And so he's, he actually talks to him and confirms the covenant. They ran the covenant here. And he said, 2815, I will not, I will not leave thee. And, and woman just talked about looking at how fresh that promise is. Aren't you glad that, you, that we're told that God will never leave us nor forsake us? Well, I like that one. I like that one because I've been in places before I really need to know that. Uh, when, you're, when you're trying to reach God some way, somehow, and don't seem like you're getting anywhere. Those verses are really more than really Bible. Uh, Jacob awakes and makes a vow. And that vow is, he talks to the woman and says it's a carnal prayer. The sovereign God graciously chose to, 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 to answer it. He said, now Lord, if you will, I will. <laughs> you don't bargain with God too much, you know. But he tries to bargain with God. If, if you will let me get out and get over here without my brother getting me, and you get over there and be with me and bless me, you know, then I'll come back here and I'll serve you. This kind of stuff, you know. And so, uh, Lord, if you'll, Lord, if you'll uh, give me another hundred dollars a week, I'll tithe. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, uh, and here uh, he makes the vow. God answers it, and then we move on. So he keeps moving on. He arrives in Haran on top of page fifty. He arrives in Haran and uh, meets. His cousin, his future wife, Rachel, had rolled away a heavy stone which allowed her to water as she, Jacob, introduced himself, accompanied by kissing and crying. This is the first of several important meetings in the Bible which took place beside wells, and, and uh, Genesis 24 was one of them, of course. Uh, Jacob then meets Laban, his uncle, and future father in law, and Jacob agrees to work seven years for the hand of Rachel in marriage. It begins one of the great love stories of all time. All right, so you know the story, I assume, but let's do it anyway, okay? Uh, uh, you know, even, I don't know why, but we find Noah, we find, they like their wine a little bit at their feast. Now, I'm not here to say it's right or wrong, I'm just saying that you find that, you know, they, and so uh, you have to go back and study the, the wedding of some, they had a feast, and then, the, and then the, the bride goes into the groom, you know, and this kind of thing. And so, uh, having completed all that, then Papa Laban sends Leah in. <laughs> Not the one he had bargained for. Leah in, and and, uh, and in his condition, and in the dark, and all. He don't know it's Leah, you know. And so, uh, anyway, so, uh, and, and, but the custom of the day, there's a little bit here to say about Laban, is in the beginning was that the custom of the day was the older one had to marry first. Okay, you couldn't just pick out and say the Lord, you know, the older married first, so he got the older one married. And there's some idea there by the names and all that. Leah didn't look nearly as good <laughs> as Rachel, so you can understand why uh, Jacob picked Rachel, okay? I mean, let's admit it, you know. Beauty skin deep or whatever that means, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we live in a I guess always has been man that looks candy for something, okay? And so uh, anyway, uh, and so uh, he and so uh, he agrees to he agrees there to work another seven years. He agreed to work that seven. That must have been a pretty one. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and work another seven years for Rachel, okay? But he didn't wait seven years. He only waited a week. I mean, that Laban said, okay, but you got to promise me you're going to work, you know, which the work was good. And so he labored all as many years. So that's two of his wives, okay? That's two of the labor, okay? Two of his wives right there. And so you'll see now the frustrated family man, you'll see here then, uh, and I've just got in my notes, the deceiver is deceived, <laughs> okay? Uh, and then, and then down here, then we have this is on page fifty on E three. 
Jacob now has two wives and would gather two more. As Leah and Rachel each present him their personal handmaidens for childbearing purposes. These four women will bear Jacob with twelve sons and one daughter. Now, he calls them wives. Four of them, but they were handmaidens, and so I don't know in that day and time. But anyway, you see them there. How many from Leah? Leah was the, the four women will bear Jacob with twelve sons and one daughter. On the one daughter mentioned, may have been more daughters. Okay, but one mentioned more for the reason. And from Leah, you have Reuben and Simeon. Now, notice the next two. I don't know if they're on, I don't know on yours, but these are important. Right. They're not people of the, they're from Leah, the handmaiden. Levi, Levi will be the, the priestly line. All the priests will come from the tribe of Levi. And the next one is Judah, and from Judah will come is a line of the tribe of Christ. Right. So, and they're from the handmaiden. Explain that one, okay? I can't, I can't explain it, okay? But that, that's the way it worked out. And so, those two, Ishikar, Zebulun, and then from Billah, Rachel's handmaiden, uh, you have Dan. From Dan came Jeroboam one, when after they split from her line, uh, and Dan, I think that Dan that drops out of the numbering until Revelation. I, I might not be wrong, but anyway, there's a reason there. Nephilim. From Zilpah, Leah's handmaiden, comes Gad and Asher. From Rachel comes Joseph and Benjamin. Of course, Joseph, Joseph will become, later on here now, when you get Wednesday night, Joseph will, uh, will become, uh, from Rachel, will become the one, and then Benjamin was the younger one. Uh, he's the one that goes and looks. You know, Joseph goes, and uh, Benjamin's the real young one. Okay, and there's some conclusions here that he has at the bottom of the page. Half of Jacob's sons were born to a wife, Leah. He had no intention or knowledge of marrying. And it gives you those I just gave you, Levi and, and Judah. Uh, Leah gave Jacob his only recorded daughter's name was Dinah. Uh, Rachel bore him two final, two final and favorite sons. Joseph would later, of course, become the most famous of all. And uh, then it goes on there about the, the things that she tried uh, to, to what I'm going to try to have to give them. Now, the enterprise employee, employee now, you talk about to me what you know about this. <laughs> uh, Jacob, at that point, would like to return home, but persuaded by Laban to remain for a while. And Jacob says, okay, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll make a deal with you. I will continue to take care of your cattle and all that kind of stuff, which it made Laban See, God's been blessing even though, and I, from our standpoint, he shouldn't have been blessed. But God's been blessing anyway. And so, he had, Laban had increased just because Jacob was there and taking care of things. You know. He said, I tell you, do what I'll do. He said, I'll, I'll do this. All the streaked and the, the otherwise uh, discolored, you know, I have in there, you know, uh, said, uh, I will do a number of years, and when it's all said and said, you first of all you give me mine out of that, I'll take them all, and then and then we'll separate. Then later on, I'll get all of those, and you get all the ones that look pure bread. You're going to call that okay? I'll do that, and so he devises a scientific scheme. <laughs> now, I have no idea commentaries. You know, they say well this that, but I have no idea where it was just the Lord that did it. <laughs> Or whether it's something good. There is an old, you know, people know about wives' tales, okay, that that a lady's child could be marked by when she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a child, a wives' tale, but I mean, uh, that if you right at the type of birth and you're out somewhere and you run up on a snake and get scared, it may mark the child. That kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> this is sort of what. This is right here, but Jacob says, and so Jacob devises this scheme that when they're when when they're when they're they're breeding, you know, male and female that and watering hole that uh, that he'll put string bark from trees like will be his, put it before them and as they look at it, it would cause them to have more of that, you know. Also he does some scientific he takes the ones that look like his, that are good, strong, healthy, and puts them sometime with the weaker from the breed, and naturally the good, healthy, the, 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 the 
genetic thing from the cattle will make more of them come out of those that are stronger than the, the, the dominant genes and stuff, you know. So he's got it going. He's got he's got uh, what he's doing there and the, the type of cattle and his things for them to look at there and while they're breeding and, and, and otherwise. And so anyway, it works out. So he becomes really, you know, a lot of them are his. Well, Laban's boy, real boys, say, you know, if he keeps going like this, he can have it all, and we won't have any left. So they say, we need to do something about it. And so uh, it's, he heard it, and so when he sees Laban again, he knows that Laban is not, after that, doesn't seem as nice to him as he had before. They're three days different now. They're, 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 they're in countless because of the size. They're three days different. So Jacob is getting ready. And so remember what God says to him, Jacob, it's time to go back home. And he tells him where to go to. He says, I'll come back home when you first left. You go to Bethel. Very important. You go to Bethel. He, God confirms it. He, he, he ends up. And, and one day, or as quick as he can, he gets his wives together and, and everything he's got, and they begin moving back toward home. So then, after they're gone, it's three days before Laban finds out. But when he finds out, he gets his people together, I mean, his fighters together, and, he, and after seven days, he catches up with them. Okay. And a little bit known, a little thing here, Jacob doesn't know this, but. but but his, but uh, Rachel has taken her daddy's gods that's in the house, and she stole them. Now I didn't, I didn't know this. So that's something I pick up every time I do this. I was reading, but I didn't realize this. The custom of the day was if, if, if I give my gods to my son-in-law. Then at my death he gets everything. If he has my gods. It's like a contract, you know. So so this is one of the reasons Laban was so Laban certainly didn't want him to have him anymore. And so that's one of the things we think that Laban of these people that wrote this thing that Laban was so outraged about too, you know. And so he catches up and he said, You know, how dare you you could at least let me tell my daughters and my and my grandkids goodbye and this kind of thing, you know. But he actually had it in mind to kill him. Maybe, you know. But God said to him that night before he called with him, he said, don't you say good or bad about Jacob. So Laban had enough sense to know that God talking to him. He said, he said to him, he said, you don't, you don't touch him. So when he gets there, he uses the God thing. And so he can't find him anywhere. They let him. And Jacob says, hey, I don't have him. You search anywhere you want to. And he couldn't find him. Rachel had taken the gods and she was pregnant and put them in the in the, the saddle part you would call I guess of the of the what, the camel she was riding on and she was sitting on them. And she said to her daddy, she said, I'm the way of women, I pardon me, but I can't get down any you know, so he didn't ever find them and she's sitting on them, okay? And so she was just at me too. But uh Anyway, that uh, and so they they form a truce there, and uh, they, they they put them up a, a thing there, and the truce is and what it actually means, regardless of some of the interpretation, is it means this is the line. If I catch you over here, right. we'll be into you. Right. So it was a truce. If you're still here, right. right? It was a truce, but you better stay on that side. Right. Okay. So. So we, so we move from there, and Jacob has yet another problem. Remember his, remember his brother? It was the last time his brother said to him, if I ever catch you, I'm going to kill you. Right. He said kill. I, isn't that right? He, he said, yeah, I'm going to kill you. No, that's what he said. So he's over yonder. He's been taking word now that he's over there, and he's got X amount of men, I don't know, 300, 400, whatever it is, over there. I mean, he's got a passel of men with him. So Jacob thinks he's waiting for me over there. Yeah. I can't go back across the line here we to David. Go I got to go on, on, you know. And so, and so he he said he plans. He said, okay, I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna split my party. My because see, he had I mean, he had this uh, a southern word. He had oodles. <laughs> I mean, that is 
he had oodles of cattle and all that kind of stuff, and he had those four families, you know, with those four wells again. He said, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to split together, I'm going to send one one way and one another way out there, and if he, if he takes, gets on one of them, the others survive, you know. And he said, but what he did, he said, but I'm going to send to him as much as I can send to him and hope that appeases him. So he sends up gifts and all that to him, you know. Right. And he sends them on. He said, now you go on, and I'll stay here at the brook, you know. And this becomes one of the great places in the Bible, you know, is uh, at, at the brook. And so after they're all gone uh, on there, very important, after they're all gone, uh, what takes place? And uh, that's uh, page 51 of those notes that I gave you. Uh, it works G on the land. It says that Herman Ressler, he's ministered by angels on his route homeward as he had been leaving home some 20 years ago. Jacob here mentions the first time in the Bible the armies of heaven. That's what he meant by the phrase. We're interested in that. Uh, in those areas, I'm trying to get down to the other part. So I just went over with you. Uh, uh, on the second column, three. They're cured that night by the river Jabbok. One of the most mysterious and wondrous events in the Bible. And here's where he says this. Oh, why? That's what, it, what theology one may glean from these strange things of God and man engaged in an all-night wrestling match. Now, in 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 Georgia, it wouldn't have been a wrestling match; it'd been a wrestling match. Right. <laughs> but an all-night wrestling match uh, is kind of like learn. <laughs> <laughs> My wife said, "Tell him you put make it two syllables ruin." <laughs> I said, right. well, that's what I've always said too. I got some most valuable Georgia things that come out. They always kid me because I, I couldn't. I got some. I, I I did not say branch right. I call it branch. <laughs> so uh, all night wrestling match. Two facts clearly emerge. And this he, he wrestles with the angel. Now this is one of those we believe was a theophany. The angel of the Lord, which is a name for uh, Old Testament appearance from God, and so because of what he had to be, because and so it, and so he says this two facts. After all night, he says he says to him, "I won't give up." Says to the angel of the Lord, "Until you bless me." That was what he said, and so he continued to wrestle with him. Now we know who could have won, right? <laughs> it's just another flat, but. The Lord allowed it. I want you. And so, he, so he gets two things here. And that's 4A on the second column. His name is changed from Jacob, the crooked hill catcher, or supplanter, to Israel, which signifies one that has power with God. And he never walked the same after this, after this soul struggling session with God. Uh, and because God touched him on the hall of his thigh. Now, there's two things here there's an inward and an outward thing that happened here. You take it anywhere you want to go with it, but but that's what I already mentioned one time. This he was saved at Bethel on the way. I believe that was his salvation place. We'll talk about one word he was leaving. Mm -hmm. But it's got changed right yeah. here. Right. That's what I was talking about a while ago. It, and that and that fits perfectly with a life of a Christian. Yeah. When you come especially if God calls you to do something. Well, you've got to make a determination. I'm either going to serve God or I'm going to do what I want to do. I mean, there's no, no turning around on it. So, uh, <clears throat> his name is changed and the power of God. He never walked the same after his soul struggling session with God. After Jacob called the name of this place, Penal, which means the face of God, God had touched his heart at Bethel, but now at Penal, God claimed his life. The former place saw his conversion and salvation with this place, witnessed his consecration and sanctification. The first introduced him to the peace of God, the second freely gave him the peace of God. He now possessed not only possessed not only life, but abundant life. And so you have this this uh, I I have a sermons I do on canal. And I use this idea here that for the Christian life you have a demonstration here of, of, of what needs to take place in many people's lives, you know. So you may have gleaned some of you think is important. Anybody have something to insert right here about this about the all night wrestling match? Uh, see, God's going to use him in spite of his bad character. Yeah, but 
But now, if I were in 19, if I were doing the class in 1967, I would tell you that I was able to that was ours, and, and God and people all be able to tell you a Christian about how you look, think, smell, where you go. <laughs> you know, that was the message of the 60s. Okay, uh, that kind of thing. You know, you, you look right, you talk right, you went to places, you didn't go to movies. You didn't go to, you know, whatever you, you know, wherever it was, you didn't go. <laughs> all right, you know, used to be said we could shoot shotgun style. We could nail it all to the wall. That's what you used to preach it, you know. <laughs> I was at pastor school one time with Dr. Hiles, and, and Dr. Hiles, I, they actually had little blankets that if they, now when a woman sits down and dressed naturally comes up, are you with me? So somebody like a lady can have a dress on this. Just a little above the knee, and when they sit down, well, you don't need to be sitting in front of them, you know. And so they had little blankets, and they saw somebody like that. They just ushered and stand for them. <laughs> just laid in their lap, you know. Uh, and, and, and then, but that was the 60s and 70s, okay. Uh, it, it was really something. I seen a lady, an older woman in a church, give a lady a coat to put over a young lady's. Uh -huh. That's the same, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was in the day. I haven't been now. Now this is not being pious because I'm not. Times change, and uh, but uh, I watch movies on seat DVDs and that kind of stuff, you know. But I haven't been to a movie house, to a theater, since 1960 something, because I was taught that you're just helping Hollywood. Which is anti-Christian against Christian. When you go, part of your money is going to help that. You know, that's thing. And being seen there, you know what I mean. I didn't want to be seen there. I wouldn't be seen in a theater one. I'd be one that wouldn't be seen in a in a in a, uh, a beer joint. That's me. You know, that's leadership to me. I don't need to be there, so I don't want to be seen there. I don't want to lead somebody wrong. You know, this kind of thing. So that's me. I don't anymore. I don't. I don't. You know, I don't talk bad about somebody. You know what I'm saying? If they do, but it, it's not for me. And separation is is really a, a personal thing between you and God. Right. But I do put great. I think any church leader ought to ought to give leadership. You can't tell. You can't drive the sheep. The sheep lead. The sheep follow. And so you need to exhibit leadership. That's just me, okay? That uh, you know that you need to you need to give you need to give your people something to shoot for. They might not hit it, but if you live down here, they're gonna live down here. You with me? I don't want to get too bold. Of course, it's not my church. I'll be too bold in here, you know. I'm just saying, okay. And so, so, so that you understand what that's all about, okay? Okay. At an hour down an Edmer, uh Change there in his life, and now he becomes someone. But he's still not where he needs to be. Well, you'd be called to preach, and still not where you need to be, <laughs> you know. And so we we follow in here, and we go on here, and so he now goes to meet Esau. He, he goes on now, a changed man in many ways to meet his brother Esau, and still not knowing what's going to happen out there. And uh, so when he gets he get, gets to he gets there, everything is really pretty good. Through the years, he's always calmed down. Esau's a man of means now. He's you know he's got he's got stuff you know. He don't need that. He lost from the blessing you know of part of the material things. So he gets there, but he says to him, oh, "Come on, visit me over here where I live on Mount Seir. You know, visit me." Once again, typical Jacob, he says, Jacob won't tell you I, I don't want to go, I'm afraid to go. He says, well, you know, my kids, my little kids, my grand, my little kids and all that said, you know, and my cattle said, you can't, you can't go too quick with them and too fast. They want to do, you go on back and I'll come see you. It X number of times, you know, and what it was. He never did, <laughs> you know. But what he did do is uh, he, 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 got a, he got a piece there and he camped. Now, I'm going to give you this thing. God told him specifically, I want you to go back from where we met at Bethel. 
you go back there, and that's wrong, you know. And he gets back there, and I have a sermon. I think it's pretty good that I never got much result out of it. That was pretty good. Uh, is that it's called 26 miles short. Now, I think our text may say 30 miles, but whatever. But it's 26 miles, for my calculation, from where he settled at to Bethel. And he's, he's just about there. And it's Christian life, too. He's just about where he needs to be. But he stopped just short on the side. And no story happened to him then when he's there. Then when he, when he, when he, when he sits down there, uh, not at uh, Bethel, uh, he lets his daughter Dinah go out. Now, the book says she's 14. I would have thought she was a little older, but maybe 14 that thing down. And commentators see a little bit of a problem here, and he just lets the daughter go out in the, another new land just roaming, you know. And the son of the prince of the territory there sees her, and, and he takes her and uh, has sex with her. And once again, it was heathen thing that if you saw an unattached female, not married, not escorted, anything, and you saw she was right for the taking, in the land of the Canaanites and Hittites, so, or in that area. So, you know, he was following his own lust, his own, you know. And so anyway, he takes her, and of course, uh, they get upset about it. And so he comes and says, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I'd like to just have Dinah for my wife. Or he didn't say that, but he may have been one of my wives, for all we know, you know. Uh, my wife, and so they say, well, you know, and see, the Israelites have a distinct obligation given by the Lord, is you don't intermarry because of the line. Okay? That's what will happen later on. When the children of Israel later on would, would, would leave Mount Sinai as a nation, and they will go into the, Canaan, to the promised land of Canaan, and explicitly say, you know, if you stay separated and do what I tell you, I'll bless you in the land. If you don't, I'll take it to captivity, and he did. And they got in there, and they began to intermarry with Canaanites. Or are they, were they, weren't they supposed to like get rid of everything in that town, in a lot of them towns? Yes. They were supposed to get rid of it and burn it, don't have nothing to do with it. And yes. we had some of them. Especially the people. The people, <laughs> yeah. Destroy the Canaanite completely. But so because, mm -hmm. now we think that's cruel, but you go back to Noah and Canaan and say, they were descendants of grandson Canaan that the curse was on. Of, of Canaan, yeah. You know, of Canaan. That's who they were going there to destroy. They were being destroyed because because it had come to the time to where there, God uses a lot of time, he's very long suffering, and he'll say something like, you know, their, their, their time is not up yet, or whatever, you know. And that, so they were supposed to go and destroy it. Now, you can't understand that it's just believe God's a holy God. I mean, I can't really understand total denial. I'm more probably innocent, you know what I mean? Right. So I can't really understand well, that. I think, it, you know, with the, the split, you wonder, I wonder, you know, with this lineage went with Christ's lineage. Mm -hmm. The others were born of the same same family, but yep. they went the pagan way, and that's why they were pretty much des destroyed. I, I would think is because even though they were brought and knew better, yeah, they turned their backs on it and did their own thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's just what I, I that's Jim thinking. Yeah. That's it, you know. Well, Jim's thinking about as good as Glenn thinking. <laughs> well, he's not explicit in there, okay. Right. Uh, in there, okay. Uh, uh, Y'all want to take a break? You need a break? Bathroom. 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 Anything? Okay. So we'll just go ahead and get through what we need to do here, okay? Which is about where I, I need to be so we can catch up a little bit. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read in on page 52 something Wilden wrote. I've got highlighted uh, that uh, number C. It says here, uh, and, and, she, and Shechem then determines to marry Dinah. That's B. And asked Jacob for the necessary permission. In fact, the Hivites suggested to Jacob, "Make your marriages with us, and take our daughters unto you, and ye shall dwell with us." Okay. And then C says. The line of reasoning is, of course, one of Satan's favorite tactics. The Christian is urged to raise his tolerance level 
and lower his standards to appease his flesh and to abandon his faith. That's here. And, and, and that's true. Uh, we're even seeing that now in America. And we get worse and worse, but our tolerance. Can you, you that old enough, can you remember when the, the, the thing came out about abortion in America? Oh, yeah. Huh? I mean, Christians were upset. Really upset. And now it's just sort of a, huh, still upset. Well, you may be, but I mean, it's sort of a tolerance now. Yeah. Everybody's taught to be tolerant. you got to be tolerant of everybody else. Yeah. And uh, some things you need to be tolerant, some things you don't need. If, it, if it's anti-Bible, you don't need to be tolerant of that, I don't think. Now, you can be gentlemanly, and you can be nice, and you can be this kind of thing, but but, uh, but, but tolerance will lead you to destruction. The more you tolerate, the more you're putting wedges in there of your, of your, of your faith. Well, all this toleration is getting us where we're at today, to where sure. people can't even... They're bringing up stuff that don't even make sense now, you know, don't even, it's crazy. I like the, uh, I mean, you're right. last week now, the uh, Friday night, it was over in Alabama, right over at Alina, Alabama, you may have seen it on the news, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation uh, wrote, and they said you can't have prayer football in your way, anyway, the, the two teams that was going to play, they play over here, had gotten together because they always had prayer for the school. Got together. It's public school. Public school. Yeah. The two teams got together, and everybody in the stands, the teams, the students, and all the people said the Lord's Prayer together. <laughs> Good deal. Like that. Good deal. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that freedom from and that kind of stuff, you know, it's, it's just, it wasn't what the country's built on, and, you know, it won't last without it. We know that. But anyway, uh, yeah, toleration. To every, you need to be tolerant. Man. You don't be, you know, don't be one of them fuddy daddies. Be tolerant, okay? Uh, and so the tactic there is, and so Dinah's brothers, inwardly boiling with anger, cruelly deceived Shechem by agreeing to his request with the stipulation that all male Hivites circumcise themselves. So they do, and so the third day, these two brothers, uh, these two sons of Jacob, Levi and Simeon, they go in and they, when they can't move or they, they, they take their sword and kill them all in this village, okay? Uh, and so, of course, uh, Jacob rebukes them, it says here, and, and makes the cup. But I want you to notice here, in that, page 52, right down the bottom, Jacob rebukes them, but notice his reason. He didn't rebuke them with the right reason. Uh, and so uh, it says that one, he expressed no sorrow over the defilement of his only daughter Dinah. He voices no regrets over the entire time been exterminated. He apparently is unconcerned about God's feelings on this. His main, perhaps the only concern, is that he be hurt because of his sons. He assumes no personal responsibility whatsoever. So he's still, you know, I don't like this because it's going to hurt me. And they might get together and come kill me. Uh, and so, um, uh, it goes on here about the, the sin of adultery uh, with Judah, and you can, you can read that as another part of the story. But it's just the story of what's going on at that time, what's going on there at that time. Then in 35, finally, the obedient patriarch, God again reminds Jacob of his previous command to return to Bethel. Okay, that's all about the land being where God should be. Jacob had been living in Shechem for 10 years. And Bethel was only 30 miles away. Remember, Anderson theology is 26 miles away. Right. <laughs> but uh, it may be 30. How tragically easy it is to move towards surrender and yet fall short of it. And, and I think, I was saying, the first at Bethel, his first meeting, after years in his meeting at Penal, the brook, Peter, and then now, this one here stopping short. So he had three main places in dealing with the Lord, you know. And and he was still not where he needed to be until he got back to Bethel. You know. And old preachers years ago, I mean, bunch of them. I never knew them, but I was told of them before my time that they used to really preach about going, getting back to Bethel. Getting back to Bethel. Getting back to Bethel. You know, you mean <laughs> So, uh, and then so. Uh, of God. Yeah. And 
then two, Jacob instructs his entire household to destroy their idols, to wash themselves, and to put on fresh clothing in preparation for the Bethel trip. These idols and earrings are then collected and buried under an oak tree near Shaft. This is the first recorded revival in God's work in that. He threw that in. He threw that in. But knows what happens here. Old Jacob knows. And when God gets hold to him and he decides I'm on going back to Bethel, he takes the idols, he takes the stuff, he buries them. Gets rid of them. Okay? Uh, that's sort of similar. The earring, all that stuff is sort of like the children of Israel when they get to Mount Sinai and Moses going up and right. come back to Golden Calves there and they say, well, we just threw our stuff in and this popped out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he made him eat it, don't he? <laughs> you know I mean? Uh, it just popped out. We, we didn't mean anything by it. Uh, and so Jacob, number three now, Jacob arrives at Bethel and builds an altar there, naming it El Bethel, the God of the house of God. It notes here that as we have already seen the name Bethel means house of God, but El Bethel means the God of the house of God. The difference being these two concepts is the difference between knowing the Word of God and knowing the God of the Word. We are to read the pages of the first to acquaint us with the first and the second. And I guarantee you, just putting that process right, there are colleges and Bible seminaries Bible college, across the country today that people know what the Bible says, right. but they don't know the God of the Bible. That's true. Uh, I mean, really. You'd be surprised. I, you know, the the uh, the Methodist church in my hometown. There's one Baptist, and one Methodist. Well, it's two Baptists now. We have split off. <coughs> Southern Baptist and it's a town of five hundred now. People all you know everything around me. So everybody knows everybody. So years ago, one of us split off from the Southern Baptist church and formed another Southern Baptist church. And then outside of town is the Church of God. You know? And so th those that's what's there. And so this preacher that was in Methodist Church, this has been pretty recent, years ago, that he was there. Everybody liked him. He was a good guy. I mean, everybody liked him. He did what he could and everything. You know, Methodist Church, unless you really request it, they transfer you up four years to another another church. And so he got transferred down near Savannah. And, and to his credit, he wrote that congregation back and said, I've got saved since I left there. <laughs> everybody, 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 everybody loved him. That's why I say everybody loved him, you know. And so I guess they learned from that because now they have a lady preacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, wow. just come about two months ago, you know. <laughs> so uh, I haven't told anybody there since then, you know, about it. But, uh, I preached my best friend in high school his funeral there last year in the church. And Mr. Church never heard anything like that. <laughs> I told them how to get saved. You know, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were all they right. were all my, some of them were my friends, so they weren't too bad. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, they got yeah, wrote back and said I got saved since I left there. I went to college. Yeah. I don't know how that happened, but, but, but that's what he said. Uh, okay, and then uh, the star and saint he loses in rapid succession. Then notice, I, I kind of take this as some idea here of. When you don't do what God says, when you don't go to Bethel, even if you're just 26 miles short, there are things that just happen. And, and, and there's three things here that are normal things. You can't say it happened because of that. But in rapid succession, his old nurse Deborah is, is buried. And, and this has been evidently through the scripture, has been with them for years and years and years. It's kind of like. The nanny of days gone by that you know that maybe brings up the kids and this kind of thing. And bury her, and then second, his beloved wife Rachel dies, giving birth to Jacob's twelfth son, who is named Benjamin, son on my right hand. Uh, and then Isaac dies, his father, at the age of one eighty, buried by Jacob and Esau. Uh, and so, I mean, these were all the sovereign saints at the end of his life. There, I don't have anything to do with. Anything in his life, or it's just natural. I have no idea on that. But uh, he's an interesting man. But also, it's a, it also proves to you that it also proves to you that God will and can use people that are not just right. That's right. Yeah, he's the Lord. Uh, you know, I, most of the time they're people that are that really they're unassuming. They have a character of law, something you know. And I, one I, one I look out for is uh, in my ministry was 
Now, what's he, you, you young people may not understand who this is, but do you know who the Lone Ranger is? Mm -hmm. now, not the new movie thing, obviously, the old Lone Ranger. You know, Utano. Uh, you know who they are? I have no clue. Oh, I have to bring a DVD. Oh, are you watching on YouTube? I go silver. Get up, Scout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Kenny, no? You yeah. know? Oh, no. Okay. Anyway, Lone Ranger. I'm not going to Lone Ranger. I, 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 this is important. <laughs> it's almost final, you know. The Lone Ranger <laughs> was was part of a of a Texas Ranger troop. And was it Walker Texas Ranger? <laughs> no, <laughs> they were horse, 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 horse. Okay. They, anyway, Cowboy and Indian. They anyway, were. so they rode into this canyon, Tonto. this outlaw game, outlaw game ambushed. Them. Okay. Them up here, you know, they thought yeah. they'd wiped the whole troop out. He's playing ball, but one one of them. Barely living. And this Indian, whom he had helped years gone by as a boy when his tree boots got raised, came along and nursed him back to health. Okay? And then he went out and they went out and caught this beautiful white stallion. Okay? He named him Silver. Okay? And just, silver could do anything. This, and it's tough today. And it, huh? It's tough today. It is somewhere. Yeah. But anyway. So he put his mask on and so nobody would know. He just heard he's called the Lone Ranger. Okay, he was on one left. And him and Tonto, they went through the west up here and where help was needed. Okay, so that's... Now when was this time period? In the 50s. Now always had music too. The <laughs> William <laughs> Tell Overture. Was this a movie background. or was this a... Uh, yes, you know what the, you know what the <laughs> William Tell Overture? That's the, huh? The William Tell Overture? The the William Tell Overture, yeah. classic music. That yeah. Well, that was old that was a thing that brought him on. Did her dump, did her dump, did her dump, dump, dump. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's a movie. It's not a TV series. No, it's a TV series. series. TV TV series. series. TV it series. went yeah. long. It was black and white, and then it went to color. Went to color. Is it like Andy Griffith? Or something like that. Kind of like <laughs> Ben Day. Well, that days, days, but you know, this is. This ain't put on. This ain't put on. This is real stuff. <laughs> well, kind of like wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't. You we don't talk too much that. about going. We done gone frog, baby. Anyway, so you've learned something tonight. I learned something. <laughs> what did you learn? You stick around old people and you'll learn <laughs> something. I mean, I'll be any good for you. Yeah, to. They're in the days. They're in the days. Uh, Gene Autry and Roy Rogers. You ever heard of them? Uh, vaguely. <laughs> well, listen, their three horses could do anything. They could almost talk. They could tell them when they were in a pit, and they said they hauled right to them, bring me a rope. They gonna get a trigger. Rope. I don't know about that. <laughs> that was the 1950s. Uh, but you're not from yeah, the south, are you? I'm from the south. Uh, I used to live up in the north. He's from the sheltered south. Mm -hmm. But I'm not like I'm not your typical like country boy southern <laughs> type of guy. But I'm I've lived here. That's when you go to the picture show and get your bag of popcorn for a quarter. Mm -hmm. Zero boy was a nickel. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm telling you. You ever heard of Lauren uh, the La Lash Oh yeah, I met him. Yeah, I did too. He, he used came to live in April. Yeah. With a whip. Oh, yeah. Fuzzy St. John yeah. with his guy yeah. pig. Yeah. I saw him in person. He's wearing we'll, that wheel. With that. Yeah. Stand over there. I don't know who John Wayne is. He was hey, well, he said later. He know, did the Saturday, Saturday matinee. He would, uh, yeah, he would, uh, Fuzzy would, play, he'd make him put a figure in his mouth or something, and he'd stand over there and whoop that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him do that in person. Wow. Isn't that something? That's one of my claims to fame. Well, yeah. <laughs> that and sitting next to him. Uh, the coach up there. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the other class. One other yeah. class. Yeah. She famous. Yeah, well. Yeah. Hey, I did learn today that you're famous for the pea patch. Oh, the, the message is God's pea patch. patch. Yeah. And they're the Eastern message. Yes. There's a lot of peas. A lot of peas. Yeah. I learned that today. God's Clown and God's pea patch. patch right here. Was that you that preached on the pea patch, wasn't it? No, sir. That was a uh, Brenda Hurd's son. Uh, Oh, that was him talking about. Yeah, yeah. standing in the middle of. The, he was standing in the middle. Yeah, mm -hmm. he packed because that was the lentils. Mm -hmm. okay. Shama. 
The Shamgar too. Go you know, check him out. All right. Uh, Wednesday's last time we got. It. We're going to talk about Joseph some Wednesday, but now I'm going to make it easy on somebody. We've got to have the test for grades. I got to have something in the, in the book. Okay, so I'm robbing you. We got tonight, two over here, right? Uh, those are study notes. They're not tests. Right. They're on the test with me. But one of the tests that would have been over Abraham. Was Abraham the devil? Tonight. In his study notes, three. They would have been an Abra, it would have been Abraham and Isaac. Three. They would have been two. And then Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph would be all of them. You know. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, be prepared to take at least some of them on Wednesday. And then I'll give you a take home final one, okay? That'd be okay. And the next book is it start next Monday? Yes. How, how much oh, we do? Okay, here's what I'll need to know. Uh, I assume that two of you, three, three of you have no choice. Oh, well, you have a choice, but I need to really know before I know what's because it's right here close. Okay, is is how many is planning to continue next two months? Yeah. Are you guys going to continue? It looks like you've got a year or so, you said. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to, I, we, we, I will be teaching both next. We'll be doing one, two classes next. For, for one class will last two months. Okay. So it's, it's, that's going to make it a lot easier. Uh, and Brother uh, brother Mike Register will be teaching Monday night. And he'll be teaching doctrines, the, the first part of doctrines. That's split the doctrine one and two. The first part of doctrines. Brother Mike has a master's in uh, Christian education. Is he the one that teaches at Creekside? Yeah, well, he used to. He used to be an administrator. One of them, right. Right. Yeah, but he can do it, and he's been working on that for a month. I need to tell him what we're going to have, you know, and that. I guess you don't remember what. Then I'll be doing, I'll, I'll continue, there's enough people want, I'll be doing Wednesday nights continuing in Book of John. And they'll run two months. What you'll have is about one night we won't have. I'll be gone one Wednesday night. And that your question, I, I might get with him. We've gotten missions conference and we're Yeah, you're probably swamped. Sat, well, I'm not leaving him Saturday night. I mean Saturday and it's more not more or less up, it's more up to y'all. Had you rather have a week between and start Monday week or Monday. I'm flexible. I mean I'm flexible. I mean I'm I mean it's skinny. I mean, you need the time to do it, but I mean, I don't want to, we, we're running on top of each other, so I mean, yeah. so Monday, if you start next Monday, you will have had Saturday night and Sunday here at church, and you know, it'll be again Monday, so, uh, you, and I can make a flexible where will start Monday or Monday week. It's not, I mean, let's do Monday week. It's up to and I know, no, I don't, I don't see anything, I don't, any Mondays, it's going to affect it will affect two Wednesdays for me because it'll run into Thanksgiving week, and we're going to have a Tuesday night, I believe, like we did last year, and we got a speaker, so I probably won't be able to have have it that week. And so what I might have to do, you guys, we won't do anything in September. We don't do anything at Christmas time, you know. But what I might have to have you back, like a night, like the second week in December. Long time of Christmas. I got to be in Texas that first week. I'm doing uh, TBS graduation in uh, Spanish in Texas, and that's going to be the first. I'll be going the first Wednesday. In, in, so would that be all right? I mean, hey, in December you we can take one. Whatever like, after you I get mean, back, as, as long as the morning. hours will the hours stay the same. Like, will it be at six o'clock on Monday evening? Well, might be on Wednesdays. On well, Wednesday, well, yeah. But, Wednesday but we could do it. But we could do it when I get back. You know, that we can do an odd night just. To Yes, yeah, whatever it takes. And I don't know I've got John lined out pretty well. So John's going to be our next? Be mine. Here's my reason. I like to do Genesis in the beginning and John, because Genesis sets the stage for beginning everything. The beginning. And really, John is the gospel yeah. of the New Testament that, that comes from God's standpoint. I hear you. You know, and you get a lot of stuff in John that's from God's standpoint. You don't get into other gospels. Because that's like a New Testament course of liberty in the name. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In John? You know, we did all that. Uh, it was, but it was. Or, or did you do all gospels? Or it was all gospels because it was a sixteen life of Christ, life of Christ, all that. I mean, it was okay. a sixteen. We do just John. I begin with comparisons on the synoptic gospels in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Yeah. And the reason, but then we get into. Oh, we want to look at this now from. It, it's all with John and Mark. It's from God's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of 
Sun Lot, it means same. And so Matthew, Mark, Luke are from man's standpoint more, really, and, and but John from God's standpoint, you know. And boy, you begin John just like you do with Genesis. It's the beginning God, God, you know, being it's just kind of like a like a second the second Genesis kind of. Yeah, thing. but but that's 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 the New Testament. So I yeah. like to set those two for a time. You know, and that. so Okay, so what do we decide? Tell Brother Mike, do we want to do we want to wait to the second Monday week? Second Monday, yeah. give you a little bit of a break, yeah. I, especially if you need it for my class. See if catch those things up. Okay, okay, I'm gonna set him for a week from Monday. Okay, and I'm supposing what he needs is 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 this is this time slot working all right for y'all? Is it is it working all right for everybody? The, the six to eight thirty. Now, of course, he'll be set to give you a break over fifty minutes of that if you want. But a lot of mine, I say you won't want to know. Well, he let us out. Will he let us out thirty minutes early on Wednesday sometime? Well, you should. Yeah, he's planning for that. You know. So, I can tell you what his going to be. His is a lot of them are little. What he's going to do is just uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But their 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 uh, theology, uh, Christology, and pneumatology. Okay, that's that's Father. Theology, and that's Christology is Christ, and pneumatology, pneuma means spirit. Mm. So it'd be, it'll be, that sets the groundwork for all the others to come, and then they'll follow that with the rest of the doctrines. We'll be in one semester. Okay, that's what it's set up. He's been really working on it. He told me that, he said, I got, he said, I got all my, you wouldn't believe my table. He said, my, 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 Dining table, he said, it's just full. I said, welcome. I said, all I've been reviewing in my school. You know, so, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I think Mike will do a good job. I've never talked with him before, but, but I know he, he taught, he actually taught classes at Creekside. He taught my granddaughter Bible at Creekside. Uh, and uh, I, I think he's put a lot of studying. In fact, I have given him also a in-class taped, taped series or somebody else to talk for me uh, on that. So he's got something to look at, you know. But you're, I think the one he's using, he, if you want to pick it up, it's it's uh, Bible Doctrine by Mark Campbell. But you can download it free. If you want to go ahead and try to find it, it's, uh, you look up uh, Cambron, C-A-M-B-R-O-N Institute. Cambron Institute. Used to be on their on their website on their alumni, but now it's in Cameron Institute. And about middle way down the page, it'll say it'll say uh, uh, it's a doctor. You'll recognize it, and you click on it, and it's available free now. So you can download the whole thing, and you can do it week by week. You know, whatever you want to do, it's set up that way, and so it would be easy. It, it's it, he's I, I brought he's got about ten doctor books. <laughs> you know, that's why I always don't put them together. But this one is is really good. It's all laid out in order. They don't have a whole lot of meat between them. You know, you put the meat on yourself, you know, and you'll do that. But it'll be laid out where it'll be real easy for you to see where it's going. Okay, it's a it's a good bit. He was the he's got a, he's dead now, I think. But he was a dean at Tennessee Temple back in the heyday of the, of the school. Uh, he started uh, for Bible for Bible College uh, with somebody else. And, got all kinds of other things. He started Seaside, was it Seaside Missions? One of those great missions.